Next up, we have Shane Grigsby. I'll let you introduce your project. Hi, uh, so I'm Shane Grigsby, and this is my project, uh, Spatial Clustering in Python. Um, basically, what I was doing was um, trying to figure out a way how to segment LiDAR points into objects. So what we have here is we have a collection of leaves. We're scanning them with a LiDAR scanner with an RGB um, camera on top, and then we're getting a three-dimensional point representation. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to try and segment down to leaf objects so I can fit things like bounding boxes, so I can calculate things like angles or areas. And so this is basically just a segmentation problem. We can get a little bit of information from the red, green, blue values, um, but it's sort of hard to segment floating three-dimensional points. So um, we tried a few different things. We tried k-means clustering, um, which has a couple problems. You need to know how many objects you want to segment, um, which I have no idea how many leaves there are there. Um, and also, it gives you objects that are not necessarily, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't respect the clustering um, structure that you might be interested in. You get sort of odd shapes of odd boundaries. So here's just three different um, k-means groups that you can kind of see should be segmented further or kind of oddly shaped. Um, so I looked on uh, scikit-learn and they have a really, really robust, uh, good algorithm called uh, dbscan, which is a density-based um, clustering. Um, algorithm. And so that gives you kind of these, you know, these actually look like leaves to me. You can kind of see this is four different views and different sorts of orientations. So you can see like this looks like a leaf to me, that looks like a leaf to me. And it's nice because it'll actually, um, it'll recognize noise, it'll kind of disregard noisy points, and it'll give you um, a clustering structure that's really, really kind of useful. Um, the problem was is that the uh, DB scan algorithm that they had in scikit-learn um, use a distance matrix to do its calculations. And so um, this is uh, 500,000 points, 550,000 points. And so that works great for 5,000 points, for 10,000 points, but as soon as you start to get into larger data sets, you can't actually fit all of that in memory. So, um, so what I've been working on is basically re-implementing this, um, this algorithm in Python so that I can use a KD tree to sort of go through and get distances as I need them. Um, and this has been really nice because, you know, this this is something that is working now for me. Um, it takes a pretty long time to actually go through and, and run, but earlier this was impossible. So, you know, I can run this um, overnight and I can actually come up with a clustering you know, structure, and I can actually segment my, my points now. Um, and since I figured that this was PyCon, I wanted to actually put some code up there um, instead of having just all pictures. But So this is sort of the code where it is now, and I'm still working on it um, in terms of I'm trying to see where I can get some additional performance gains, where I can make things a little bit better. But it works. So it works now. It's gone from being you know, not possible to being something that actually works and is possible now. Um, so there's more things I'd still like to do. It's kind of set up into, do, into two different... Um, steps. There's a prep step basically where you go through and you calculate out um, sort of the number of neighbors you have at a set distance and that's something that I'd like to sort of paralyze. I think that you, it doesn't matter the order that you do it so you could actually split up that list into you know 10 processors and each one of them you know do it. Um, there's a few other things that I think could maybe be done a little bit better but most of it's basically been written in sort of vectorized um, numpy code with the exception of one or two loops. Um, and it's working, so that's something that I'm excited to, to work with. And this was sort of my first jump into object-oriented programming, which was really nice because um, my background's more in terms of science, less in terms of computer science. Um, but I had a chance to actually inherit from the uh, KD tree and then implement a processing queue onto it to say, hey, has this object actually been examined and processed? So that way I could sort of go through and, and loop in an intuitive and spatial manner. Um, so yeah, so I was really excited about this. I've been really happy to come to uh, to PyCon just to sort of see what people are doing and to see what else is out there. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that um, as I finish this up, other people will find this useful and I can maybe push it back into either Scikit-Learn or put it up on GitHub and have other people, um, if they're interested, use it. So That sounds great. Um, is it available now or...? Uh, so I'll uh, post it after... So I actually finished writing it, I think... I finished writing it uh, two or three days ago. So I started it earlier. I, I, I decided to come to PyCon to give myself a firm deadline on when I'd have it finished by, which worked very well. Um, and 
Uh, so I have a little bit more testing to do, but I'll have it up basically by the end of the month. Right now it's March, so it'll be up by... And where do we look for more information? Um, so you can look at my um, webpage, which is uh, geog.ucsb.edu uh, forward slash tilde Shane. Um, so I have my email address there, but I will post a little um, a web address as well. So it's a slight oversight, but yeah. Um, so it should be, I'll, I'll post it there, and then I'll also post it on GitHub as well. Okay. So, um, do you have any other questions? That's about it. Thanks and congratulations. It looks, haha, like a great project. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay.